Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the Streamlight uh, rifle lights, okay? Uh, before we get into it, uh, you know, uh, hit the subscribe button, um, hit the, uh, you know, hit the bell button to get notifications, and if you'd like to be able to hit the thumbs up. The reason is because, uh, it basically, the more thumbs up I have, the more subscribers, the more this, my videos become suggested, and we can draw in more people to this, you know, to this channel, okay? Uh, and then we can have more conversations in the comments section. So, I, you know, basically that's what I'm trying to do with this. I'm not, trying, I'm not making any money out of this. I don't monetize any of this. Um, I'm just trying to grow a community. So, uh, so let's talk about these Streamlight lights. I've got two of them here. Um, this is the Streamlight uh, ProTac 1000 Looms. Um, I think it's the, uh, yeah, hold, I wrote it down here. It's the HLX. Okay, that's the HLX, um, 1,000 looms, and uh, they they say that it's good out to 325 meters. Okay, uh, and then this one here, this one, I, this one I've only had for a couple for uh, actually about a week or so. This one I've had a little bit longer, a couple of months. Um, this is the uh, Streamline, uh, just the ProTac. Uh, this one is 625 lumens. Okay, uh, and they say this one's good out to about 297 meters. Okay, so so we got 625 looms versus um, versus 1,000 looms. Uh, now there is a size difference. Yeah, hold these two things side by side. Where is it? There you go. You can see the size difference. All right, um, and uh, what I did is what I wanted to do is I put the smaller light on a rifle that I use more for tactical training, you know, where I come up, you know, this is a lot more moving and shooting. Um, and the other cool thing is by, you know, I, I didn't want to, first of all, they give you uh, two, two uh, end caps over here. One is a, a button switch like this, and they also give you the, um, um, the, uh, the pressure pad, okay? So, so this is with both of them. You, both, you get a pressure pad with both of them. Um, and this is really cool because if, uh, from my understanding, um, that Surefire doesn't give you these things. You have to pay extra for these things. So uh, both these lights are about $100. So I think that's a great deal. I, you know, one of the things I tell people is um, I don't recommend you pay more than, you know, $100 to $120 um, for your lights because this is a rapidly developing technology, okay? You know, it, you know... It, in a couple of months and six months from now they'll have like 1200 looms and 1500 looms okay um so so this is a rapidly developing technology um it's it's uh you know it's not like you're gonna buy one light and that's the light that you're gonna have you know for the rest of your life with that rifle that's not the case at all um a lot of times people talk about durability um surefire versus streamlight First of all, I've heard other people tell me that they've had like upwards of 10,000 rounds on these lights. But besides that, you know, I don't have that many rounds on these lights. But besides that, I have this light here, okay, uh, that I've been using for about a year on this 9mm rifle. That's a $3 light, okay. It's a $3 LED light. I bought a 5-pack, okay. I've got it on this 9mm rifle. Um, I don't shoot this all that much. I have somewhere between 500 and a thousand rounds uh, on this rifle with this light on it um, and and basically this cheap three dollar light uh, is doing fine the only issue I had is that the uh, the, uh, the the lens you know at the front was basically vibrating loose basically it was unscrewing so what I did is I took some plumber's tape you can kind of see the white over there so I put some plumber's tape around the, the threads and I basically tighten it in and that kind of holds it in place so the, the point I'm trying to say is that you know um, LED technology or LED lights by their nature are very durable okay I mean I've got you know like I, I use like I said, the $3 lights I mean I've dropped these things off of ladders off of roofs these things you know they're durable you know I mean even if they're not meant to go on rifles they're very durable um, so so on the LED light that's meant to go on the rifle you know it, it, it's gonna it's gonna last I mean it's not gonna be I mean I don't think durability is an issue uh, just because of the nature of what LED bulbs are, okay? Um, so so that, so that, those are my thoughts on that. It's not worth paying, you know, more for the surefires when, for, for, for a, a temporary technology, which is going to be continually advancing. Uh, so moving on, let's talk a little bit more about the, um, uh, the capabilities of these lights. We've got 1,000 looms 
versus uh, 625 looms. Um, they tell you that they both go out to about, let's say, about, about 300 yards. In reality, if you're in a situation like this in the woods, okay, um, what you're going to really get is this light here, the 625 looms. Um, it's, it's basically a 100 yard light, okay? Uh, as far as actually engaging targets, you're going to be somewhere between somewhere between 50 yards and 75 yards um, at you know at the, at 100 yards. I mean, unless you have a large target that's white, okay, you're not going to be able to really see it as well. Um, not in this type of environment, anyway. So, 625 looms in the woods is a is a 50 to 75 yard uh, light. Now, on this one here with the uh, 1,000 looms, um, I was actually shooting a target at, uh, it was a, uh, an eight by 11 white paper. You probably, you, got, you guys have seen me use those type of targets in other videos. An eight by 11 paper, I was shooting that at uh, 170 yards, 170. Now, from the 170, I went back to 200 yards. At 200 yards, I really couldn't see the paper. Now, mind you, I'm using, uh, uh, this, uh, this is the primary arms uh, 1 to 8 scope. So I'm using magnification uh, to be able to see this target at 170 yards. At 170 yards, I was able to see it well enough to take a good shot at it. Um, you know, and I was getting a decent group. Uh, it wasn't spectacular, but it was decent. Um, at uh, 200 yards, I mean, I couldn't find it. And that's knowing where it was. Knowing between what two trees to look, I couldn't find it, okay? So... Uh, that's that's a little bit of the reality of the situation. Um, the other thing, uh, you know, like I said, it's 170 yards. The other thing is that I was experiencing, um, walking from, let's say, walking that 170 yard distance to the target, um, it gave me a good opportunity, you know, uh, to actually practice using the light uh, in somewhat unfamiliar ter territory. I was not actually shooting in this area here. I was shooting way off to the side over here. So I was I was moving through the woods in the dark, and like I said, it was like way off. You can kind of see what the trees look over there. How the you got all these branches sticking out. Um, you know, it, it's it's not an easy walk. Uh, most important thing is my light hat. Okay, most very important tool. We were just trying to hit the button. There you go. See the lights. Okay, that allows me to see what's at my feet. Okay, without that, um, I I mean I I basically would have been tripping over myself. Um, so that's the first tool that you gotta have. You got you gotta have a light hat in the woods to basically cover that distance. Um, and the other thing that was happening is as I was walking through the woods, I was actually using the opportunity to do some um, you know some some training um, because as I'm walking through the woods, basically now all the uh, night creatures are out, right? And as they're, they're rustling around, they're making noise. Uh, now I'm not hunting. I'm just practicing here, I'm practicing moving. So I got the rifle here. And, and what was happening is that I would hear noise in a given direction. You know, what I would do is I would basically come up. Okay, I, I have my thumb on the safety, even though I'm not actually planning to shoot. But basically, I'm just practicing that position. Uh, go come up, put the pressure pad on, shine that area, do a scan. Okay, you know, and then come off, move to a different position. Okay, um, you know, walked a little bit more. Um, you know, again, I would hear another noise, turned in that direction shine the light you know do a scan move you know you know and then continue moving okay so 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 this is a good way to do your night shooting uh and you can kind of practice a couple of things at once you're practicing your distance shooting you're practicing your distance shooting with the with, with the with the uh with the light on um you're practicing moving you know so, so there's a lot of good stuff to do the other thing to be aware of is um when you're shooting with the light right okay when you're shooting uh let's say when i was shooting that 170 yards after you, after you fire your shot, um, basically you have all the muzzle blast that comes out. Now in the daytime, you, you can't see the muzzle blast, basically. So you can continue to follow through. You focus you know, on keeping your, your reticle on the target and, and making sure that it doesn't move. At night, when you're using the light, as soon as, you, as, soon as the gun goes bang, what happens is all the, all the stuff comes out of the front of the barrel. And um, you know, the, you got all that smoke. The light basically reflects back on that off that smoke so the target disappears so you don't have the ability to do your follow-through so so that's one you know and you actually had to wait about almost 20 to 30 seconds before the the, the smoke would clear out and I could you know well maybe it wasn't 20 seconds maybe it was 15 seconds but whatever I had to wait a few some seconds 
in order for that smoke to clear and I can see the target. Okay, so so that's a uh, an important aspect of uh, of night shooting. Okay, you have that you know once you fire that round, the the um, you know your, your your light's gonna basically reflect off of the smoke. So it, it almost never makes any sense at night. You know, with, with, if you're shooting at distance with a with a, with, with a rifle scope, to to anticipate taking a second shot because you're not gonna be able to take the target. So you take a shot, take a shot. Not put the light off, you know, and then move to a different position. Okay, so so that's the reality with the uh, with the smoke. The other thing that um, yeah you're gonna have to work through is, you know, you've got this light here that puts out a thousand looms, and now you know um, you've got your reticle. Presumably you're using a a, a reticle that's illuminated because because uh, this rifle ha this scope has the uh, uh, the ACSS reticle. It's etched onto the glass. But it's also illuminate, illuminated. Now, when it's in like black mode, right? If, if, if the illumination is off, um, I really can't see the uh, I can't see the reticle. So what I did is I put it to the one setting. Okay. Now in the one setting, what what I can see in uh, on this particular scope um, is uh, you know I can see the target. Okay. I can't see the chevron in the, in, in the center, but I can see the horseshoe, the circle basically around it. So what I was doing is I was putting the horseshoe around my target around the 8x11 paper um, if I switched it to the number two position you know now I could see the chevron uh, but what would happen is now the the, the 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 reticle was so bright that I could no longer see the white paper so so the reticle basically was overpowering the target so I had to switch back to the one position where the chevron you know you can't see the chevron but I can see the circle around it and basically I had to you know, kind of anchor the circle to the corners of the paper um, and take my best shot like that. Okay, so so again, this is something that you're gonna you're gonna learn by doing this, uh, by experiencing it. Um, you know, and just just moving back and forth through the woods to check your target. You know, set it up again, move back, um, and, and like I said, along the way, when you hear noises, use that as the, as an opportunity. You know, to to basically pr practice scan. You know, searching with your light. You know. Um, you know, you know, turn to the direction of the noise, you know, put the light on, okay, then do a, you know, a scan in the area, light off, move, okay, so you don't want to stay in that one position, so a uh, good tra tactical training opportunity. Um, this rifle here, this is the Ruger MPR, uh, great rifle, um, with the, I have the, the pressure switch over here, uh, you know, because basically I got the light all the way up here, far enough back from the, from the muzzle so that, I don't get too much, you know, um, soot basically and, and, and garbage onto the glass. So it's far enough back. Um, I wanted to, you know, I, I, I ended up using the pressure switch um, because if, if I brought the rifle further, I'm sorry, if I brought the, gla the, uh, the, the glass further back um, on, the, on a rifle this long, it, I felt like I was getting too much of a shadow, you know, because it's got the 18 inch barrel. So I didn't like the shadow I was getting. Um, so I, I ended up using the, the pressure switch. Uh, I, basically, I have it uh, zip tied down over here. Now, the cool thing about, uh, about Streamlight is they give, you, they, they give you this for free, okay? Um, they give you two, you know, they give you two options. Uh, they give you the button, the push button thing, and they give you the pressure pad. Uh, and you can use either one. I believe uh, Surefire charge. You know, you have to pay extra for that. Um, on this one over here, okay. I basically, because I'm doing a lot of that tactical stuff. Uh, you know, this is closer distance. Um, I'm, I'm basically. I, I didn't put the pressure pad on it. I'm using the thumb switch over here. The other thing I like by not using the the, the pressure pad. I'm able to quickly, you know, take this off, put this on another, on another rifle, okay? Um, so, so that's one of the cool things. I'm able to move this around from rifle to rifle. This one is kind of going to stay on that rifle over there, whereas this, this one over here is going to move around to different rifles. Uh, one of the things you want to be aware of is wherever you put, whatever you do with your light, you have to make sure it doesn't interfere with your, uh, um, with your, uh, with your sling, okay? Because you got to have a sling, uh, especially if you're moving around at night over long distances. Um, you know, you're going to get tired, so you want to be able to rest it. Or if you need to pick something up or move stuff, you got to be able to basically go hands-free. So, but when you set up your light, make sure that it does not interfere with your sling. That's why I have it way back here, kind of a little bit high. Um, on, on this one over here, what I ended up doing is, since the sling's on this side, 
I ended up going on the on the offside, on the right side over here. Um, this way the two don't interfere with each other. So again, that's another another reason why I definitely had to use the, the pressure pad, okay? Um, you know, I considered briefly bringing this light a little further back over here, but uh, I said, you know, let's just go with the pressure pad and work with that. Um, so a couple of things for you guys to think about. If you guys have any questions, comments, let me know. Um, you know, and like I said, if you're not a member, subscribe. Uh, I'll talk to you guys next time.